Hi, welcome to watch a video on evaluating the benefits of Korean natural farming practice for vegetable crops. This is Kun Hui Wang from the Department of Plant and Environmental Protection Science at Sita University of Hawaii at Manoa. This is a close collaboration between Mike Dupont, Kim Chang, and myself. This project is funded by NRCS. In this presentation, you will hear about the side-by-side -side comparison between Korean natural farming practice and conventional farming practices on vegetable crops in Big Island. You already know the basic theories of Korean natural farming system is to introduce indigenous microorganisms into our farming system. The main objective of this practice is to maximize the potential of natural environment so that we can also minimize the use of synthetic fertilizer. This is a much popular need nowadays for our island self-sustainability. Master Chu also emphasized the need to practice Korean nature farming in a no-till system, deviate from conventional farming systems that rely on frequent tillage. In animal production system, Korean nature farming can eliminate the emissions of livestock waste effluents. But in crop production system, it is anticipated that Korean nature farming could increase production with less inputs. Most of you are already familiar with the basic theory of Korean nature farming, which is to introduce indigenous microorganisms into our farming system. The main purpose is to maximize the potential of our natural environment for crop production as well as minimize the use of synthetic fertilizer. This is much compatible with our need on achieving island cell sustainability. Master Cho also emphasized the need to practice Korean nature farming in no-till system, deviate from conventional farming system that rely on frequent tillage. In animal production, Korean nature farming can eliminate the emissions of livestock waste influence in crop production system, it is anticipated that Korean nature farming can increase production with less inputs. The benefits of Korean nature farming practice has already been proven by many farmers in several Asian countries. Some of these benefits include lower cost to the farmers, sometimes as much as 60% reduction in cost production. They also produce more desirable crops due to its free of pesticide usage whether it is synthetic or organic pesticide. Interestingly, Korean natural farming also produces stronger, healthier, and more nutritious plants. It is often promoted as higher yield, better quality, farmer-friendly, zero-waste zero emissions practice. Korean natural farming inputs are made from natural materials which are not only safe for the environment, but actually invigorate and rehabilitate the ecology of agro-ecosystem. Some resources and testimony regarding the benefits of Korean natural farming are listed on this slide. For example, the Hawaiian Homegrown Food Network, Richard Ha and Drake Weiner's web pages, and some newspaper articles by Jackie Porel and Honolulu Star Bulletins also talk about the benefits of Korean natural farming. While well, there are enough information about the benefits of Korean natural farming, questions remain about Korean natural farming are scientific evidence is lacking, and what made IMO4 and other Korean natural farming practice so great. Thus, in this project, we conduct side-by-side -side comparison between Korean natural farming and conventional practices, followed by collecting scientific data on plant health, soil health, soil tilth, mycorrhizae, and weed pressure data. We also present a cost comparison documented by three participating farmers. Lastly, we will talk about some challenges faced by Korean natural farming farm farmers. The data we collected for plant health measurements was simply crop yield. In a location where crop yield measurement was not feasible, we measured fully matured leaf leaf waste, and we also took measurement of chlorophyll content of leaves yeah, using this fat chlorophyll meter machine 
to show how effective the plants were on photosynthesis. In terms of soil health, we extract soil samples and perform nematode analysis. We count the anchitrate worms, which is a relative of earthworm, and we also stain the roots system for estimations of colonization of mycorrhizae. And lastly, we use a soil compaction tester to document if Korean nature farming practice could improve soil appeal. The data we collected for plant health measurements was simply crop yield. In some occasions where crop yield measurement was not feasible, we measured fully matured leaf leaf weight. And we also took measurement of chlorophyll contents of leaves using this sped for chlorophyll meters. This is to indicate how effective the plants were on photosynthesis. In terms of soil health, we extract soil we extract the soil samples and perform nematode analysis. Count and cultured worms, which is a relative of earthworms, and we stain root system to estimate the colonizations of mycorrhizae. And lastly, we use a soil compaction tester to document if soil tilt was improved. So why do we use nematodes as soil health indicators? Besides plant parasitic nematodes, which is showing in the middle pictures here, there are actually many beneficial nematodes in the soil. Some of them feed on bacteria, so they are known as bacterial wars. Some feed on fungi, so they are fungi wars. They are only wars, as well as predators that feed on smaller microorganisms or smaller nematodes, which are higher in the soil food web hierarchy. By counting bacterial walls, we calculate an index known as enrichment index. It can show us whether the soil is enriched with nutrients. By counting bacterial walls and fungi walls together, it allows us to calculate channel index, which will indicate whether the soil is going through bacterial-dominated decompositions or fungal-dominated decompositions. When we count only walls and predators, we can also quantify the structure index which allow us to determine whether the soil is disturbed or not disturbed. Other indices such as richness and diversity of nematode communities are also a good indicator of the soil health condition. In this project, three farmers in Papua area conducted independent trials at their farms comparing Korean nature farming to their choice of conventional practices in 2011 to 2012. Farm number one chose to plant soybean and they plant sun ham as a cover crop and use it as their surface mulch. Farm number two chose to plant kabocha squash and they use wood chips as their surface mulch. Farm number three is a permaculture farm that chose to plant where a variety of vegetable crops including kale, beet, broccoli, onions and leek and they are comparing their Korean nature farming practice to their standard permaculture organic farming practice. They use macadamia nut husk as surface mulch. Here are results from farm number one. On your left hand side is a picture of soya bean grown with Korean natural farming practices. On your right hand side is a picture of soya bean grown with conventional practices using synthetic fertilizer including urea, gypsum and magnesium sulfate. At the background of picture on the right, you can see a big contrast of leaf color between Korean natural farming practice and conventional practices plot. At the end of the experiment, Korean natural farming produced higher soybean biomass, greener plants based on chlorophyll content measured, and higher nitrogen content based on leaf tissue analysis. Thus, overall, Korean natural farming produced healthier plants in this in terms of soil health, Korean nature farming increased all the trophic groups of free living nematodes involved in soil nutrient cycling. This data not only showed that Korean nature farming enriched soil nutrients due to the high number of bacterial feeding nematodes and fungal feeding nematodes, but it also indicated that Korean nature farming reduced soil disturbance due to the high number of Omnivorous and predatory nematodes, which are nematodes that are sensitive to soil disturbance. Thus, overall, Korean nature farming increased soil health in farm number one. From the same soil extractions, we were also able to quantify anchitrate worms. 
and chytrid worms are relative of earthworms, which are much smaller in size, thus easier to be extracted from small quantity of soil. Korean nature farming plots were found to have higher number of enchytrid worms, and when we measure soil compaction using soil compaction tester, Korean nature farming plots had a deeper soil profile than the conventional plots. Even though the farmers ensure that all planting beds were filled up with same level of topsoil layer, which is 18 cm deep or 6 inches deep. Thus, high number of enchytrid worms might have contributed to better soil tilth in the Korean nature farming plots. We also documented the weed pressure after soybean had been harvested. Korean nature farming plots were covered by thick sunhand mulch before planting and thus might have provided weed suppressive properties in the Korean nature farming plots. Even though Roundup herbicide was applied several times during the course of the experiment in the conventional plots, conventional plots end up with more weed pressures than the Korean nature farming plots at the end of the experiment. The reason why we want to measure mycorrhizae colonizations on the roots is because mycorrhizae provides advantages to crop growth much similar to what Korean nature farming does. For example, mycorrhizae enhance water and nutrients uptake efficiency of the plants, reduce fertility and irrigation requirements, increase drought resistance, increase pathogen resistance, enhance plant health and vigor, enhance seedling growth, and enhance plant transplant establishment. All of which are like the benefits of Korean nature farming practices that Master Cho mentioned earlier. In the Korean nature farming plot in farm number one, we observed some mushroom fruiting bodies emerge on the ground surface. However, when we count abriscular and vesicular structures of mycorrhizae on the soybean roots between the Korean nature farming plots and conventional plots, we found no differences. Perhaps more intense sampling might be needed for this evaluation. In terms of cost evaluation, conventional plots actually cost more in materials than Korean nature farming practice. Due to expensive costs of synthetic fertilizer, including ammonia, sulfate, urea, gypsum, as well as herbicide. However, labor cost is much higher in Korean nature farming practices, especially in year one, where most Korean nature farming inputs need to be prepared from scratch. However, cost in year two might be lower due to low leftover inputs from year one. Farm number one added additional inputs of Sunham cover crops to Korean nature farming, which could also cause higher costs for Korean nature farming practice. In farm number two, the farmer compared Korean nature farming practices to conventional farming practices where synthetic fertilizer and herbicides are used. The farmers also compared it to untreated control with no synthetic fertilizer and no herbicides. Kabocha squash was challenged by pests and diseases that could not be overcome by Korean nature farming at this point, making the evaluations of Korean nature farming practices more difficult in this trial. Squash plants were hit hard by powdery mildew that resulted in sudden dieback of plant shoots. Cucurbit fruits are more susceptible to pickworm damage where the larvae bore into the flowers and penetrate into the fruits as the fruit develops. Nonetheless, farmer number two still recorded the crop yield and found slightly lower yield of kabocha in Korean nature farming plots than conventional plots, but much higher than that without the fertilizer. Percent of fruit damage by pickle worm were not different between KNF and conventional plots. However, we did observe that leaves that were not infected by powdery mildew were greener in Korean nature farming plots than the conventional plots. Unfortunately, Korean nature farming practices did not improve soil health conditions in farm number two, as no differences were observed between bacterial wars, fungi wars, omni wars, and predatory nematodes between conventional practice and Korean nature farming practices. This is possibly due to interference from pest infestation as mentioned earlier. But we did find high number of enchytrid worms in Korean nature farming plots in farm number two, and no enchytrid worm was found in conventional plots. So 
observed similar results for wheat suppressions by Korean nature farming practices in this trial. Wood chips were used in Korean nature farming plots. Conventional plots were treated with herbicides, whereas no herbicide was sprayed in untreated control. Based on hospital direct scale from 1 to 12, where 1 is 0% and 12 is 100% wheat coverage, it is encouraging to see that wheat coverage in Korean nature farming plots was not different from conventional plots where herbicide is used, whereas those in untreated control plots had significantly higher wheat coverage. Farm number 2 estimated that cost of input were not much different between Korean nature farming plots and conventional plots in year 1, but they anticipated that much lower cost of Korean nature farming plots in year 2 due to their leftover inputs from year 1. They also documented that conventional plots required 90 gallons more water than the Korean nature farming plot. Farm number 3 was comparing Korean nature farming practice to their standard permaculture organic practices. Permaculture is a farming practice that integrates organic farming, agroforestry, and sustainable agriculture with agroecology. This trial showcased many challenges that could be faced by Korean nature farming practices. Several times during the trial, heavy rainfall continued over a week. This resulted in many seedlings die back, especially in Korean nature farming plots. The farmer planted kale, broccoli, leek, beet, let and lettuce. At the beginning of the trial, all crops had more seedling die back in Korean nature farming plots than organic plots except for leek. Initially, plants in permaculture organic plots outperform those in Korean nature farming plots as shown in these two pictures. Two weeks after the initiation of the experiment, the farmer added additional compost to Korean nature farming plot. Instead of IMO4, the farmer prepared IMO5, which composed of IMO4, sheep, chicken manure, fish waste, yard waste material, and macadamia nut composted by fermenting for one week. Since then, plants in Korean nature farming plots began to look greener and healthier than those in permaculture organic plots. As you can see in this picture, burdock and leek are growing much better in Korean nature farming plots. As you can see in these graphs, burdock and leek grown in Korean nature farming plots produce heavier leaves, higher chlorophyll content, and higher nitrogen content. When we examine nematodes in a burdock plot, Korean nature farming practices tended to increase fungal and bacterial decomposition, but did not increase more structured organisms such as omnivorous nematode or predatory nematodes in a soil food web. This is possibly because permaculture practice were already practicing minimum disturbance to the soil health. Similar soil health conditions were observed in the leaf plot where Korean nature farming practices tended to increase fungal decompositions and slightly increase the structure of the soil food web. Earthworm is commonly detected in this farm, but no anchitrate worm was present. However, soil tilt was deeper in Korean nature farming plots compared to the organic plots. Results of Korean nature farming on plant and soil health varied, but it consistently increased soil tilt and suppressed weed. It improved plant health when not challenged by pests and diseases. Area with high rainfall might need to build shelter for Korean nature farming. IMO4 did not improve soil health condition in long-term permaculture site, but incorporating animal manure to prepare IMO5 improved plant health condition in this site. More data on mycorrhizal colonization is needed. Properties of Korean nature farming in increasing soil tilt could be attributed to earthworm, anchitrate worm, and mycorrhizal fungi. Korean nature farming requires less irrigation. Integrations of Sunham cover cropping with Korean nature farming show the promising results.